They say, my people perish for lack of knowledge. When you don't even know that somebody in Canada will not have Waiyek or Neko results, that's why you worry too much. 90% of the people applying to the school you are applying to will not have Waiyek results. Think about it. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today we are going to be doing question and answers and let me tell you my target. My target is to answer 25 solid questions. Who is going to volunteer to count for me? I want to answer 25 solid questions on this session and I'm hoping to give you the best response to your question, in-depth response. So, if you're watching this as a replay, make sure you watch to the end, eh? Because you are definitely going to learn something. There's no way you watch from beginning to the end of this session today that you will not learn one thing. So, first of all, uh, for those watching live, who is going to volunteer to count for me? We're going to be looking at 25 solid questions. So, and we'll count down from 25, 24, 22, uh, 23, you know, like that, like that, up to one. Then when I've answered 25, you are going to say, you. so you comment zero, zero, meaning we are done. We should call it a day. All right? All right? So let's get started. Now, those questions, these are not questions that I came with. I have, I have a pile of questions that people have asked from time to time. But you know what? I want to take this question from the people that are live right now. All right? It's people that are here watching me live right now because it's like I can answer as many questions as I want, but it will not even be that question. It will not be that question that is inside your heart. All right? So, this is why I prefer that you are going to be able to ask the question so that as I'm answering them, these are things that you really, really want to know. And if you're watching this video as a replay, well, that means that all you just have to do is watch to see the questions that other people came up with. Please, can I, can you dr start dropping your questions and then we'll take it off from there. Somebody, let me start with the first one. I have uh, a, co a question from Lola. Lola, uh, Lola is asking, is it still possible to get admission for September and meet up? Let me see. I'm trying to see more of the question. I meet up with September intake. It depends. So, uh, I'm going to give a general answer for the sake of people based on when they are going to be watching this, especially if it's a replay. But, um, just to be specific, this is, uh, uh, this particular question, today is July 2022, and I would imagine that Lola is asking me if she can get admission for September 2022, right? So what you see is that if you are going, if you are, are resuming September, most times the school expects you to resume September first week. So to, July, which has already gone, September, <laughs> August, and then you are supposed to resume August ending, right? August ending. Most times if you are resuming September, you are supposed to resume September first week, but you end up traveling August ending. So last, last, you are, talking, you are asking me, let's bring the question back to something everybody can relate to. You are asking me if you can finish your study abroad process, start and finish your study abroad process in one and a half months, in six weeks. The answer is no, as far as I'm concerned. Why I said that is because any other person can tell you any other thing. If you are working with other people, they will tell you their timeline. And you too, you'll be able to follow them through and see whether it will work for them or not. So, six weeks is a no-no. You usually want to plan for six months to 12 months. Six months to 12 months. Six months being like the least. Because, why, why is that the case? You can finish the process earlier. You can finish it in four months. You can finish it in five months. But those are exceptions. You can finish it in three months. Those are exceptions and they are not the rule. So, it's like, uh, what example am I going to give to you now? Um, if I give this example, it may not even work because of so, uh, countries where other people are. Uh, but let me let me put it this way. Let's assume that you 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 want to go to work, right? And it takes you uh, thirty minutes to get to your workplace, or one hour to get to your workplace, and then 
somebody is asking you can i get to my workplace in 30 minutes or can i plan to get to my workplace in 30 minutes your answer will be no that doesn't mean that it is impossible for that person to come out one day maybe instead of them waiting for a bus let me give you some instead of waiting they're waiting for a bus they see someone that will drive them there or instead of them driving a, a car where they have to follow through any normal traffic rule they decide that they want to use a bike a bike because bikes you know sometimes if there's traffic jam they'll go 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 and they'll get to where they're going to maybe a place that's supposed to take you one hour ends up taking you 30 minutes right all those things can happen nobody can say they cannot happen but they are exception not the rule if you're a normal human being you're trying to go to your go to work every day you cannot plan for 30 minutes when it will actually take you one hour even though on a rare occasion right or on a rare occasion you may be so late you saw a bike man you begged him he took you you feel bike let's say you're in lagos past mainland bridge go and whatever and you reach where you're going to you cannot use that as your plan if you are if you plan that way there is something wrong with your plan so if you're asking me if you can finish your study abroad process in six weeks no you want to plan for 12 weeks uh, sorry 12 uh, six months to 12 months minimum i myself when i started my study abroad process i plan i, I when i when I officially started, because before then I was searching, doing all these normal, normal, small background things. But like when I remember, make like started with schools and all that, was 18 months from the time I was going to travel. 18 months. Because when you start way ahead of time, you have enough time to search out the schools you need to search out, to talk with the professors you need to talk with, to take everything at, because it's not only you that is involved in study abroad process. Right? It's not only you that is involved. Schools are involved. Professors are involved. Your university is involved. The same person that is talking now, a school may say, send us your transcript. Bam! You will say it's taking you two years to get it. There are so many things that are not in your power. Even if you want to finish everything in one week. There are so many things that, is not, that are not in your power. So, you cannot afford to start late. You cannot afford to start late. As I'm talking to you, the people starting their relocation plan now are the people preparing for January next year, but preferably September next year. Okay? September next year, gold standard. Then some people are still preparing for January, which are like, oh, let's just, let's just see how it's going to go, kind of thing. Uh, those people are always there. They keep in mind that you may eventually be traveling September next year. So, it's not to make it sweet for you. But if you are traveling September next year, you've not started now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what your plan is. Maybe you have a plan that I don't know about. <laughs> there is this saying that my people will say. They say, uh, when you see somebody dancing on the road, don't say they are mad though. Because what is clapping for them may be inside the bush. You know, meaning you, you are not seeing it. But the thing they did, they clap for them. That's why they are dancing on the road, by the roadside. So, if you apply to do your relocation uh, plan in six weeks, something that is, what is engineering that thing? I'm sure I can't see it. So maybe when you give me more information, I'll be able to do so. Let's see more questions. To the next question. I hope those counting for me are still there. Let me look at the next question. So I have another question from Benny. Benny is saying, I want to start processing my master's in Canada. How do I go about that? Okay, remember I told you I was going to be giving you in-depth response today. So, if you want to start your uh, master's program in Canada or any other high-income country at that, one of the, let's assume that Vantage Migration does not exist and Dr. Linda does not exist, right? What you're going to do is, uh, you're actually going to go to internet, you're going to find the school you want to apply to, and you're going to check what their requirements are, and you're going to put in your application. Then the school is going to take their time, process it, and admit you, right? And once they do that, you take everything, you go to embassy, embassy gives you visa. When I mean go to embassy, is um, is a like, how do, like a description. It could be that you're submitting online, it could be we are doing a role interview, whatever that may mean. You get your visa and you travel. But this is the process. 
But where people usually get hooked is when I say find the school. You know, say which school? Hmm. Check the requirement. You know, say what requirements? Hmm. When they when you even say this requirement, send one SOP, one this, one the other. Ah, what's SOP? You know, say okay. SOP means statement of purpose. They will not be like, how do I write it? You see, so all the different steps that you need to go through, most people don't have an information or they don't know how to go through it. This is where Vantage Migration and Dr. Linda Hemer comes in, right? What, what, what do we do? We teach you exactly how to go through the process by yourself, step by step. Step by step. Th that's where we come in. So, uh, so this is what I want you to know that if you know exactly how to go about the process you just have to go and do it but if you don't know it is wise for you to get trained by Vantage Migration or any other person out there that you prefer if you want to be trained by your cousin get trained by your cousin if you want your brother to train you get trained by your brother provided that that person have the uh, study abroad process experience right when I was doing mine there was no vantage migration. Even this Dr. Linda you are seeing today, it was I was not like this. Like I didn't have the knowledge I have now when I was doing it. I was just in your shoes, right? And I still had to figure it out. As you heard, as you've seen, if you are watching the entire video of this, I, it took me eighteen months plus to sort it out. So you can do it, but most uh, have everybody now. Most professionals go for training because instead of using 18 months, 2 years, 3 years to sort it out on your own, you can shorten that time. Let me even tell you, if you take training and it takes you 3 years to sort out your relocation plan, what that means is that without the training, you may never travel. Without the training, it may take you 10 years, it may take you 5 years. You get some people think that ah, mm, this is where should they talk, eh? Mm, this is where should they talk. I think the training, you know, this is two and a half years. So if you understand what I'm saying, anybody who goes through training and it still takes them two and a half years, it still takes them three years. What that means is that without the training, they may be taking five to ten years, or the dream may never materialize. That's what it means. So don't underrate training. Don't underrate training. It will surely cut off some number of years from if you were supposed to do it on your own in one year. If you get trained, you can do it in six months. If you were supposed to do it on your own in two years, if you get trained, you can do it in six months to one year. You understand? If you were supposed to do it on your own in four years, if you get trained, you can do it in one to two years. So training helps you to avoid mistakes. Even when the road gets tough, you know exactly what to do. That's the importance of training. But when you say this, some people will not understand. They just feel like, ah, I'm not, I'm not talking about training. Who go feed down for me? That's your choice. So you make your selection. I'm just giving my opinion because you asked. So for those that want to work with Vantage Migration, we we'll always say start with our free study abroad webinar first. Right? Because if you don't have time for, the, for something that is free, is it now when somebody say pay that you have time? Some people, I don't, I don't have time for that free webinar. I don't have time. I don't have time. You don't have time. The location is not your interest yet. It has not become a priority. Go and come back. When is a priority? Come back to us. <laughs> you know? So, attend our free study abroad webinar first at www.vantagemigration.ca Alright? www.vantagemigration.ca I should probably find a place where I drop the stuff. I'll bring it before we finish this session. So, keep that in mind. Let's see. Then we have uh, another question. The question says, how can someone with HND travel for master's program? The, yeah, this is uh, very similar to the first question on how can the person start master's program. The difference is that this person has a HND. And it is no longer news that with HND you can get masters direct in some countries, or you can also do postgraduate uh, postgraduate diploma in other countries, right? So, uh, advantage migration will show you how to go about that process. So, keep that in mind. 
if so, so if you have hnb you want to start i advise you to get trained so that you know exactly what to do and you take it up from there okay so uh, and then um, uh, if you are watching this on my instagram at dr linda Ihene, what i'm going to advise you is check check other videos that we've done a few days ago i did a, a, a um i did a a 50 minutes to one hour video talking specifically about relocating abroad uh, uh, for those that have hnd or polytechnic uh, degrees so check out for that video if you check some videos back you check out for that video you'll see it if if you're hnd holder you'll be able to watch the replay and that would be awesome if you are watching it on youtube do the same check out for you can just put hnd travel abroad dr linda iheme on the search button of youtube right and then search it will help you bring out my videos that have to do with hnd even if you're watching this now you can do it on uh, youtube after you complete this video all right so let's see the next question someone said they are not hearing me please if you if you're not hearing me you can also let me know right but i believe it's probably the person's network so let's look at a question uh i have another question from mary bell mary bell mary bell is saying um how can i come to canada aside school so there are other options you can go through the express entry pathway the express entry pathway uh, has like small small options it has the one for um, non-skilled workers it has the one for provincial nominee it has the direct path so read up go to www.canada.ca that is canada official website all right a immigration website so go there and read about the all the different types there's so many there's so many right and if that is the option you want you can you can read it up however advantage migration we handle education migration only meaning we work with people who want to relocate abroad through the study abroad route why because it's the easiest fastest and surest way to relocate to any high income country easiest fastest and surest way like i i always say people should take me up on that bet meaning you have somebody who wants to relocate through another means and starting afresh then you have another person who wants to relocate starting afresh but through the study abroad pathway we can place a bet and we'll see which of them will relocate first like provided that their profile is similar if it's a single person let this one also be single person if it's a married person with two kids let this one also be married person with two kids you will see that the study abroad person will relocate first take me up on that bet i always say i want to bet i'm yet to see somebody that will take me up on the bet okay so uh let's look at the next question those counting hope you are still counting let's look at question question okay i have this beautiful question here the question says what are the common mistakes that students make that can get lead them to visa refusal please if you have questions feel free to drop it as a comment i'm taking them as we go so common mistake that people make the first one is that they apply to the wrong program that that one is like the biggest mistake that like if you see 10 students that have visa denial about eight of them is from the wrong program wrong program so uh advantage migration we teach you during the admission uh, like when we are teaching for admission we teach you so that you understand programs of best fit what and it's specific for each person all right like me and you we don't have the same program of best fit even if both of us are dentists right we don't have the same programs of best fit because based on different things that have been happening to you and what you've been doing since you graduated your own may be different or even before you graduate your own may be different mine will be different some courses may overlap right so when you go through our program we help you like we show you and you'll be able to do it and get correction on how to come up with your own programs of best fit so that when you are applying you're applying to a program that is already a program of best fit somebody that does not go through training may be struggling doing the application doing this doing that 
at the end of the day, they are in the wrong program. The visa will never get approved. You see? So, common visa mistakes is, is wrong program. So, you say I should give you the common mistake. At least, that is one that you should hold. Now, let's look at the next question. Someone said... This is the next question. So I want to process. I, I want to process for Dublin. Dublin is Ireland, okay? Dublin is Ireland. <laughs> so Dublin is in, in Ireland. That's what I mean. Um. So if you want to process for Dublin, which means you are going to Ireland for study, we can work with you on that because we work with people going to all high income countries. All right. So I'm going to advise you to start with our free webinar go to www.vantagemigration.ca okay www.vantagemigration.ca whether you are going to ireland uk finland austria <laughs> sweden switzerland irrespective of the european country you are going to we can work with you on that and even though in your mind now you may feel like, okay, I'm going to Ireland. Do you know that after everything, you may still end up not going to Ireland. You may find a better alternative. Do, do you know? You may find a better alternative. So, when people come to us and be like, I want to go to Canada. I want to go to Dublin. I want to go to UK. We say, okay, we, we've heard you. It's like, hold that thought. A friend of mine will say, hold my beer. <laughs> You will be like, you will be like, okay. When you say do something, you will be like, hold my beer. You are chatting, you know. I'm like, ah, ah, where am I going to see your beer to? You know, like, you, see, you know, the way guys will be like, hold my beer. Let me do something. Guy will be like, hold my beer. Okay. He's like, you will be like, you want to go to Ireland. You want to go to Sweden. I'll be like, hold, hold that, your, hold your thought, hold that your beer. All right. Now we are still, we are going to teach you how to go to any country you want to go to including the one you had in mind so that in case you get to know that there are three four other countries better than where you are going to or more you i've seen people they will change they will change their mind sometimes after going through our training they'll be like hmm i think this is easier first let me start from there or i think this will benefit me more let me start from there or oh given my this and this this other country is better or I really want to go to Ireland. I have learned how to go to any other country, but I still want to go to Ireland, so I continue my journey. All right? So there's no, there's, we don't box you. We don't box you. So uh, you can attend our free webinar at www.vantagemigration.ca. You, if you're on Instagram at Dr. Linda Ihema, you can check for the link on our bio or chat us in box, and we'll be able to. Help you with that. Ade is asking, can you secure admission for graduates program with low CGPA? Yes, you can. We work with people irrespective of their CGPA. Whether you have a third class, lower credit, a pass, a second class lower, a first class, a second class upper, upper credit, whatever you have, we train you so that you will know the program that we accept you because of that grade. So, the easy, what makes people with low grade not get admission is not because they cannot get admission. It's not because they cannot get admission with their low grade. Alright? It's not because they cannot get admission with their low grade, but because, <laughs> but because they are applying to the wrong program. So, if you apply to a program that people with first class is supposed to apply for, but you have third class, you will not get admission. Right? Like... 99% of the time, you will not get admission. So, the goal is not, oh, how do you go and improve your grade? The goal is, how do you know, how do you know uh, the program to go for? How do you know the program to go for giving your grade? All right? Keep that in mind. Uh, Misa is saying, uh, I, have a, I have a family, I, ha I want to study in UK and I have my family in the UK as well. How do I go about it? How you're going to go about it is not different from how any other person is going to go about it because it's not as if your family members are the ones that will get the admission for you, right? You're still the one that will get it by yourself. It's not as if you're going to be giving visa because of your family members, right? So 
Even though you have family in UK, it has not made you any different from any other person who doesn't have family in UK. You just simply have to learn what to do and you go about doing it. Right? So, I'm just trying to explain that your question may look different, but it is not. Having a family where you are going to study has not really changed anything. The most important thing is that you are a human being wanting to study and you can get started. You can go to uh, www.vantagemigration.ca, right? That's where you, you can take a screenshot, please. Take a screenshot. So, this is how you are going to be able to get... This is how you are going to be able to get um, the process and what it takes and how do you proceed from there. Okay, someone said, uh, between UK and Canada, please, where is the best place for masters? I want to know where to read my masters. Uh, enlighten me and guide me through the choice of program for masters. So, uh, Brian Emmanuel, Bri Emmanuel, one thing I want to let you know is that this exact question you are asking are some of the things you are going to be treating within your first one week of getting trained by vantage migration so what you really need to do is to attend our free webinar to see how to proceed from there right it's not like except you want me to spend the next one hour just educating you on this because the program you will select i can't just say you go and i look at your face hmm, it's like your face is fine go and do public health <laughs> you know that's not how it's, it, it happens Oh, I look at you. Hmm, I see your hair. This blue dress you have now uh, that you are wearing, blue. Which country flag has blue? Maybe UK. <laughs> Go to UK because you are wearing blue and UK flag is blue. That's not how it works, right? You will have to be able to see your options. Understand how the uh, programs of Best Fit work. Come up, do the assignment, come up with your programs. And then you can get correction if, if you still feel like, oh, I'm not sure I'm correct. Can you people check this and see if it's okay? Do you get? It's a process. So what you really need is not someone telling you uh, Canada or US is this one is better, this one is not. Because I may be in Canada, but Canada is not the best for everybody. I keep saying it. Canada is not the best place for everybody. There are some people that have grades that will prevent them from going to Canada. Or that have something that will prevent them from going to Canada. There are some people that will have reasons to go to UK. Like let me give you an example. Somebody that just... The question I was responding to before this one from uh, Ajibola. Ajibola was saying that she has family in UK. So, I'm sure if you have family somewhere you are going there, it's easier to integrate than if you are going to another place. Some other people will say, I have family there, but I never want to stay close to my family. You see, so there are different factors to consider. So, instead of just doing... You know all these soothsayers, right? Like, you just like... Mm -hmm. I see you, I see you, I see you. UK, <laughs> you know, <laughs> instead of just doing that, we train you, we explain to you. You you will be able to say, oh, okay, based on this, based on that, I think Canada can be my first choice, UK can be the second. By the way, we don't even ask you to rule out any country, right? You just have to kind of arrange them according to your choice. Because uh, we always say permanent interest, no permanent, no permanent route. No permanent choice, no permanent route. So, be flexible is even something we encourage you to be. So, you don't over worry about the nitty gritty. When what you should actually be doing is attending the free webinar and asking us question inbox if if the need be. You can go to www.vantagemigration.ca. As I said, take a screenshot of this so that you will know exactly what to do. Now let's look at questions more questions more questions someone said can i do a pgd program when i have an advanced diploma it's possible it's until you go to the school website and you, you will not be able to know whether they will accept your program or not it it is possible because you say you have advanced diploma probably you have a diploma you have an advanced diploma you're going for a pgd logically it makes sense so but it depends it will be it will be on a school by school basis all right so the question now is do you know how to find the schools to apply to do you know how to go through them and get what you need do you know how to communicate with the school this is an internal question all right um uh, Kahilson, this is an internal question 
for everybody the answer will be different somebody can say i know exactly how to do that so i'll just go and do it so another person will be like i don't know how to do that so how do i you know it is at that how do i that will not be like okay attend the webinar that is how to get started let's look at more questions more questions more questions let's look at uh, someone said postgraduate diploma and postgraduate certificate are they the same thing there's uh, what they call this thing now like two different words that describe the same thing but may be different in some way let me give you an example if you say this is my house this is my home house and home they are referring to the same thing right in some instances but some in some instances it may not be the same because let's say imagine you have a property that you rented out it is still your house but is it your home you know that kind of stuff but by and large you can say a house and a home mean the same thing by and large right so graduate certificates postgraduate certificate and postgraduate diploma they are equal but they they are equal they just have been named differently because of subtle differences but for the sake of relocation and all that consider them to mean the same thing to be synonyms consider them to be synonyms okay more questions more questions somebody said what can cause admission denial when you provided all the things they asked <laughs> let me tell you the number one reason number one reason is that every school gets more applications than needed so let's say a, a school wants to admit 50 people for a particular program for that same program they can get 1000 applications and inside that 1000 applications they can have 300 candidates that are equally qualified but because 300 candidates that are qualified apply to their school does that mean that they should they should they should admit 300 people what class if let's assume they instead of admitting 50 they admit the 300 of you where is the class you sit in for the lecture do they have the manpower to take care of the 300 people right these are real questions that schools and businesses have to face so it is not always the case that because you are qualified because you applied they must select you no two things come into play the quality of your application because let's assume the program let me tell you the quality of your application and the time during which you applied these are two crucial important roles so let me talk more about them the quality of your application which is one of the defining factors that's why i said 1000 persons can apply but maybe 300 well strong qualified candidates what happened to the other 700 they may have applied they are still graduates but they may not really be strong they may not be great competition they, they may not see them as competition who will be this one because ha, they don't know you what they are looking at is your application documents from your cv to your reference to your sop to your this to your that that's what the school is going to be looking at and sometimes when they see they're going to toss it to the bush because those things you submitted are nothing to write home about so it's not just ah, i've submitted cvo i've submitted this oh what did you write inside the thing you submitted that is the cocoa so if you know that a school we almost always uh a school we almost always um have more candidates your, your goal is to be exceptional so that even if they are selecting 50 you become one of the 50s you see if you don't think that it's by seeing a school and packaging your document and shipping to them, get a half an hour, the, one, the two you submitted to now, how is it going for you? If it's going fine, awesome. But if it's not going fine, don't you think that there is a, there is a need for you to ask yourself, do I need training? That is number one. Number two is the time. We always advise students to start on time. When you say it, they want to on this particular video i've spoken to somebody i have addressed the question somebody that said if they want if they can start six weeks to the time they want to travel right those are that's a human being still watching me right now and there are many more 
Apart from that one person that asked, there are 10 other people watching this video right now who have the same thought process. So, in, in a situation where you have, let's say, 300 strong qualified candidates, the school will start looking at who applied first. It's one of the things to be considered. In such a way that if from that 300, let's say before they reach 200, they've seen gang 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 people, where it makes sense. They may not even, the remaining 100, they may not even look at you. They may not, even, sometimes they may not even look at your application. These are truths. But you, you think somebody is just saying it because they just want you to start now, start now. What would like, okay, maybe you register early, but, and so what? You are the one who is going to gain. The same thing happens when they are giving scholarship. If two people are equally qualified, they will use time of application to break the tie. Meaning, if you submitted your application, let's just say you submitted your application June 10th, another person submitted the application October 10th, they will give the scholarship to that same to the person who submitted first. Same thing, even when it comes to getting supervisors abroad. Two people equally qualified. You one wrote a supervisor in June. The supervisor said yes. The same characteristics, but another person writing that supervisor in October. I'm just giving you an example. Meaning, some months later. The supervisor may say no, not because you are not good, but because he has said yes to somebody else. But when you are explaining this thing, some people just their mind is just focused on one way. They don't even want to understand the explanation. That's why I don't say things, but I explain to you so that you understand how it's happened and this can mean uh, this can also be seen like the guy who emailed a supervisor october versus the guy who emailed a supervisor december 31st right if that supervisor has space it will first go to the person who, the good candidate who emailed october compared to the one who emailed december 1st same thing goes for if you compare the person who emailed December 1st versus the person who, e who emailed January 30th, who is likely to get it if both of them are qualified? The first person. So your goal is to start early so that you eliminate all these factors that can stop you even when you're already a good candidate. So stop waiting until it is few months to when you want to travel before you start your travel abroad process. You almost always have to push it to the following year. Especially if you are looking for scholarship. If you don't start on time. So let's look at the next question. Question, question. Um... Somebody said, what is the difference between scholarship and full funding? They mean the same thing. Generally, scholarship can be full scholarship, partial scholarship, right? But when you say full funding, it means you are, re you are referring to full scholarship. So, full, uh, scholarship and full funding are the same thing. It's just that when you are saying full funding, you mean full scholarship. Meanwhile, if somebody just says scholarship, it could be partial scholarship, it could be full scholarship. And even the full scholarship can mean different things. It could be scholarship that is paying your entire school fees or scholarship that is paying your school fees and your living expenses. Right? So, every, it just depends on what the school is giving to you. Just letting you know. Let's see. More questions. More questions. More questions. Someone said, what's the easiest way to settle in Canada with family. Uh, we've already said that study abroad is the fastest, easiest, and shortest way to relocate abroad, even when you are relocating with family. Because as a student, you can relocate with your family, meaning you can relocate with your spouse, which is husband or wife. You can relocate with your kids. You can, all of you can relocate through that same uh, admission that you have gotten. And usually, they will allow your, the students this person studying to work part-time and your spouse is allowed to work full-time all right is allowed to work full-time and your children are allowed to go to school so you can relocate you can relocate with family through the study abroad process and we're saying that study abroad is the fastest easiest and surest way to relocate abroad without missing words <laughs> let's do next question next question <laughs> so
Someone is asking if HND graduate can secure admission for postgraduate studies. I picked this question because the person added, will having a child hinder visa? No, you can relocate with family. You can relocate with family when it comes to study abroad, okay? More questions? <laughs> More questions? Somebody said, we can't hear you. Oh my God, I'm not sure why. Uh, okay, it's okay now. All right. Thank you. Let's look at questions. Uh, I'm also trying to find questions that other people have not asked. Somebody said, uh, my, my husband and daughter uh, and I want to relocate to Canada. Is the study abroad route better than the express entry route? Yes, it is. That's what I've been singing years since, right? It is. Because the study abroad route will eventually still lead you to, to uh, PR route, if that is what you're looking at. But with now extra advantage and without wasting the time of just hanging out in the pool and help, hoping. That's not a plan. That's not a plan. Hanging out in a pool and waiting. Is it a plan? It's not a plan. At the end of the day, it can take you five years, three years, four years, two years. You know? And look, I wish you can say it will take me four years. Exact. No. It's maybe, maybe this, maybe this. It's not a plan. For a family, it is important for you to have a plan, right? That's something you can work with. So, I would still advise families to go through the study abroad pathway. That is my own advice. You will eventually decide what you want to do. Okay, more questions. Let's look at this. Someone said, is it possible to start applying for master's before I finish my undergraduate studies? It's possible because you can apply with... Um, um, in view like you have your results you say in view bsc in view however i don't advise that i don't advise that because your semi-final and your final year grade is the most important thing when they are looking at your transcripts okay and you have you only one chance to make it right after that you can never go back to school to correct them so instead of you sharing your attention into school application and one way or the other your study will suffer well even if it's one night that you did not study because you were doing study abroad thing right so one way or the other your study will suffer meanwhile that extra time you got by applying early is not really going to move anything in your life faster you understand so the question is you have only one chance to get your uh, your admission your final year grade right the higher it can be the better meaning if you have that class instead of it to be 1.5 can it be 1.6 if you have two 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 instead of it to be 3.2 can it be 3.4 do you get you have second class upper instead of it to be 3.5 can it be 4.4 do you see my point so it's not about oh you have that class can you make it first class but even if you're a third class person, the more you can get your CGPA higher, the better for you, right? So don't waste your time trying to do master's application and final year exams. Focus on final year. The day you drop your pen back down, you are done with your final year exam, you submitted your thesis, chat us inbox and we'll start working with you from that day. So it's not as if you cannot start your application from final year. But we don't want you to lose focus even for one minute. Because after that, those exams, final year exams, you will never have the opportunity to go back to your undergraduate studies or your whatever you are doing. You never have the opportunity to go back to it to make to upgrade or to make the grades high. So we hit it once and for all, then you move to your masters. You know you are done with this. Alright? That's my advice. More questions. Let's see. Looking for questions we've not answered. 
someone is also asking does canada accept neko results every time i do live session i'm almost addressing this question i don't know where they are getting this information from even somebody that have never gone to a school website in canada before will be asking can canada accept neko results please maybe you guys should advise me maybe there's something i'm not seeing is there an information flying up and down about canada and neko results because i think maybe i'm wondering where do people get this information what makes them it's like see see, see the point that is like you want to cook jollof rice right and you have let's say you have fish i love fish you have fish you have onions you have tomato you have all these things for jollof rice now somebody like that you want to cook jollof rice for your for your event then somebody keep telling you they say the price of gary has gone up who knows what gari is here if you're not from nigeria i hope you do gari in your place i know that different people do gari in different ways but let me just use it gari is like cassava flour uh, you know uh, but let me just use it as an example so you want to cook jollof rice then somebody keep asking you i heard that um i heard that price of gari has gone up and this person is supposed to join you in the jollof rice cooking so you are you are wondering like is there any part of the jollof rice process that really involves Gary? <laughs> Do you get my point? Like, that's how I feel when somebody is telling me, Do they accept NECO results? Because if you're a graduate, remember, I'm talking to graduates. If you're an undergraduate or you're going for undergraduate studies, I'm not talking to you. Full stop. So it's not for me to be saying, If you're an undergraduate, this is it. If you're an undergraduate, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to graduates. So if you're a graduate, and you are applying for graduate studies. Is there any school that asked you to submit your WIAC result? If it's not that you have gone to apply for diploma program, right? Like, imagine, let's say that you go to university or what have you. I'm just using that phrase like, to apply. They've never asked you for your NECO results. So I keep wondering, where do people get this information? And the same people, when you tell them to get trained, they will never get trained. But they have they always have a way of getting them say them say including the them say them say that will choke them inside more problem why are you asking for the price of gary when you're trying to cook jollof rice that's my question I, i'm confused really even i remember one graduate i think she was going for she was going for masters or something she came to me and she was like hey, can i use neko in place of waek i was like madam can you focus on your travel abroad plans? Did any school ask you for Neko? Where he said, Ah, ma, you for tell me now that you don't know the answer. If you don't know the answer, just tell me you don't know the answer. I'm asking you this. You are running away from the question. I'm like, Are you okay? <laughs> I, I can't remember what I did to the lady, but most likely it was blocking that I blocked that person. What makes you think that Dr. Linda does not know whether you need Neko or not? I'm trying to query your ignorance and you're thinking I'm dodging the question. What do you need NECO for? For graduate studies. What do you need WAEC for? For graduate studies. If a school is ever asking you for NECO or WAEC, they are probably going to ask you just like as a verification that you did your, under, you did your secondary school. Maybe that if they ever need it. It's never going to be something that they need to decide whether they'll give you admission or not. It's probably like okay very show us that you truly attended school that's it so if they say show us that you truly attended school you will show them evidence that you truly attended school in that case why you connect will not matter the way to think about it is this why is for west african countries right west african examination council that's why right meaning an african who is not from a, from West Africa? Using Africa for example, an African who is not from West Africa is not going to have WAEC. Have you thought about that? He's not going to have WAEC results. Let's say if you are from Tunisia, you will not have WAEC results. Okay, I'm going too far. You are applying to Canada to study, right? Have you crossed your mind that in Canada, that, has it crossed your mind that in Canada? Students who finish from high school are not giving WAEC results. They are going to have what? A result showing that they finish high school. Full stop. The name is not going to be WAEC. So if you understand it from a place of understanding, you will now know that whether you have NECO, 
which shows you are finished on the uh, uh, high school, or you have one egg, which shows you are finished high school, it is immaterial. The, the, you are going to UK, right? In UK, people are not giving WAEC results because WAEC is West African Examination Council. So you will see that if you understand things, it's easier than cramming them. So when you see people say, Do I, will they accept WAEC? Will they accept NECO? I'm like, you have not even considered that outside your country, the person you are talking, the graduate coordinator you are talking to may not know what WAEC is. You don't know. He or she may not know what Wayek is. The guy from Tunisia will not have Wayek results or Neko results. What are they going to show? They are going to show whatever it is called in their own country that shows that they have finished high school. In Canada, nobody is going to have Wayek results if they finish high school from here or secondary school from here. In UK, they are not going to have Wayek results. In US, they are not going to have WAEC results. In Australia, they are not going to have WAEC results. In Sweden, they are not going to have WAEC results. So, why are you obsessed with WAEC and NECO results? Why are you obsessed with it? So, I was super surprised that the human being that I'm training was busy. Uh, Madam, if you don't know the answer, just tell me instead of dancing around the bush, I was like, Iyekwa. I, I, I probably blocked that person, not because of what they are, but because of their bad mouth. Because I don't like bad mouth in my life. <laughs> Even though it seems I have one. <laughs> but you get what I mean? Like, I was like, are you okay? Get well. <laughs> get well. So, it's not about me dodging that question or not trying to answer it. Again, it's like you asking for to complain about the price of Maggie, uh, price of Gary, when we told you to go and buy jollof rice ingredients. Gary has no place there. Why are you complaining about the price of Gary? Gary is expensive now. Gary is expensive now. Uh -huh. But we are cooking jello fries. Do you see? You, please, if you understand what I'm saying, can you comment? Can you comment? Because at least if it is these people here now, and any other person who is going to watch this video, that get this information in, a, in this way that I've explained it, you can at least tell the next person, the, next, the news will be spreading wide. Because they say, my people perish for lack of knowledge. When, when you don't even know that somebody in Canada will not have WAEC or NECO results, that's why you worry too much. Meaning, 99% of the people, or, yeah, 90% of the people applying to the school you're applying to will not have WAEC results. Think about it. <laughs> Alright, let's look at the next questions. Someone said, what are the documents needed? What are the documents needed from Nigerian University to process study abroad visa? Which I believe that person means study abroad process. Get started so that you learn about the documents. It's one of the things, it's one of the things we teach in our master class. So start from our free study abroad webinar at www.vantagemigration.ca. That's how you will get to know the documents or we'll tell you a little briefly about the documents as well and how it goes. And from there, you are going to know what exactly to do more. I think we even, like uh, at the webinar, we talk about the different documents as well. We'll talk about them. I will tell you. So that's how to get started. Let's look at the next question. Someone said, uh, if somebody wants to go to Dubai for work but not for school, can you help out? Vantage Migration, we handle education migration only all right we have do education migration only meaning that meaning that if you want let's say you have made up your mind that <laughs> i wanted to say something in Igbo, but let me say it so that the people that hear my language they will, they will laugh. i wanted to say if you have agreed that you are never going to study what that means is that <laughs> the literary meaning of that means if you have agreed that if they like let them hold your neck, you know, if they hold your head, hold your neck and, and knock it on the floor, you're never going to you're never going to change the <laughs> you're never going to change your opinion about what you want to do. Then we are you are in the wrong place, right? But we can show you how you can go to other countries and walk even through the study visa process. So we handle uh, education migration only for advantage migration. All right, 
keep that in mind. Let's look at the next question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Somebody said, uh, HND holders, do I need to do conversion to BSc first or with PGD? Will I be able to apply for master's abroad? You can apply for master's abroad with HND results without converting it to BSc. All right? Whether you have PGD or not, even if you want to do PGD, you can do PGD abroad. But without PGD, you can still do master's in some countries directly. We teach you that advantage migration. All right? Please, all those BSc top up, as far as I'm concerned, it's a waste of your time. Why do you want to do BSc top up when you can actually do masters? In one year, you do masters, you have your master's degree. Because when it comes to education, people look at your highest level of education. So once your highest level of education is masters, nobody is saying, Do you have BSc? Because now BSc is irrelevant. Because you have masters, you have a higher level of education. So, please, instead of one year or two years BSc top up for HND holders, apply for master's direct in US or UK. And in one year or one year plus, you get your master's degree and you, are, and you move on with your life. Like, what? Like, hey God, sometimes I used to wonder who, who did this thing? Who did this thing? Spreading news that HND is useless. Who did this thing? Who, I'll find the person, no. If I know at least one person I can find. Who did this thing? Our HND counterparts, a lot of them have very, like, it's like, it's almost like all the stories that have been sold to them is that you can't do anything, you can't do anything, you can't do anything. Okay, now, there was an interesting question I got in my email yesterday. So let me address it before I take the next question. Someone wrote me and said, if they could get masters, if they could get admission and scholarship abroad without work experience. Watch, watch, watch the statement. They said, if they can get admission and scholarship abroad without work experience, that they just finished their NYSC. This person was writing from Nigeria. And I said, he, it's like somebody telling me, I have worked for one year, but I don't have work experience. Does it make sense? No. So I realized that Many graduates don't understand that the importance of NYSC is to give them one year work experience. So, you will see them, they will, uh, they will tell you, I don't have work experience, but you have done NYSC. That is one year work experience. So, at least, if that question was to be correct, what the person should be saying is, Ma, I only have my one year work experience from NYSC or from National Service. Can I use that to get admission and scholarship? Do you get my point? So the question they were asking is a separate question, but the problem I diagnosed from the question is another problem entirely. This person is not seeing NYSC as a valid one-year work experience. So if you have done your NYSC here or you are still doing it, understand that that is one-year work experience. Never you say you don't have work experience ever again. Don't ever say it. And if you have one year work experience after NYC and you have NYC, that means in total you have two years work experience. Stop counting out your NYC or national service experience. For those that are uh, watching uh, from broader audience, in Nigeria and Ghana, I don't know about other countries, in Nigeria and Ghana, as a graduate, when you finish, you're expected to go and serve your country for one year. Most times they will post you to a workplace. And you work with those people for one year. Sometimes they even pay you stipends. Meaning it's even paid job. It's not even volunteer. It's paid job. So, but people, because that thing is called national service, sometimes they don't count it as work experience. Don't be like that. If you have done what NYSC or national service, you have a one year experience. Keep that in mind. But let us assume that this person has not done NYSC. They just graduated. Meaning they actually, actually, actually don't have any work experience. They can still get admission abroad. They can still get scholarship abroad. That one is constant K. I was just pointing out that, that the sentence carried the... Um, uh, informed me that this person did not understand that NYC is a valid one year work experience. Paid. Paid work experience for that matter. Alright, so keep that in mind. Alright, keep that in mind. Let's look at next question.
Someone said, please make sure you save this live session because I and others would like to rewatch it later. No problem. We're going to honor your request. We're going to save it before also. Um, someone said, uh, what if you have masters already and you want to go for another masters? Will it give you visa problem? If you do it right, it will not give you visa problem. If you do it wrongly, it will give you visa problem. How do you learn the difference? We can teach you that advantage migration because you have en you've entered gray zone immediately. You've entered gray zone. If you mismatch, you are going to detonate a, a life bomb. You've entered gray zone. So you get trained. It's instead of you go, you match match everywhere, you get visa denial, then you start all over. At that point, you have already you've created a profile for yourself. You've pay, put a red flag on your name at the embassy place. Then you come to Vantage Migration to clean up the mess. It's not the best. Even if we say yes, but it's still not the best. Save yourself that headache and start afresh. Start with us from the beginning. Someone said, um, Can uh, someone said this like should people with two to not bother applying for scholarship that they clearly stated that it's for whatever or a two one and co get trained, Mrs. Perfumes get trained because the question you are asking is not straightforward. We'll teach you the difference in a master class. All right, you can also ask more questions because master class is not just about us teaching you. It's a place where you can also get ask your questions and get in depth clarifications, right? Like sometimes we have students, okay, they have question. If we notice that the question is deep, we we'll say, you know what? Let's do a consultation. Let's do a video consultation, one-on-one -on -one video consultation, so that you can solve the problem from the roots. So these are the resources we provide to anyone looking to relocate abroad. Meaning you can take advantage of that by becoming vantage migration students. Okay, let's look at the question. Next question. Let's what's the next question? Looking for uh someone said, Do you make applications to schools? Uh for schools because I don't want to do it myself. We don't. We train you on how to do it successfully by yourself. That's what we do. So if you have vowed that let me use my language again. If you have vowed that brain is shiki and Allah, you will not be able to do it yourself. <laughs> Meaning, if you have vowed that even if we choke you, you will not be able to do it yourself. Then you have to look for a company that will help you, right? But if you believe that as a graduate that you are, as a normal, interesting, awesome, unique human being that you are, that if we show you what to do, you'll be able to do it. Then we are for you. It's your choice. All right? <laughs> it's your choice okay let's see more questions um, someone said is it, I, I want to move uh, with my family I want to move to Canada with my family is it easy to get working visa you can go through the study abroad route why as a student, you're able to work part-time while you are studying. Meanwhile, your spouse, which could be your wife or your husband, will be able to work full-time. So you see, you don't have anything you are missing. By the way, while they are working full-time and you are working part-time, the moment you finish your study, you will be able to get higher paying jobs than even your spouse that is working full-time. On the average, all things being equal, right? All things being equal, if your spouse is working full-time and you are working part-time, when you finish with that degree, bam, you are getting higher jobs than the people that just came and they are just looking for what to do. You see? So that means your, your family is better positioned when you go through the study abroad pathway. Your family is better positioned because your spouse is working, you are working, you finish school, you are getting very higher jobs compared to somebody that did not even go to school, study in that country. When they come, many of them still have to go back to school. Ask them. Ask them if you have, if you have any, um, if you have anybody that have relocated through the 
a non-study abroad pathway, I meaning they did not go through school. Ask them. More often than not, they return to school. Ask them. I'm telling you. If they will tell you the truth. And most times, if they don't, only few people who did not go back to school will get the high paying jobs. Only few people who did not go back to school will get the high paying jobs. Ask them. Make your call three, four people that have relocated abroad through the non study abroad pathway and ask them. Many of them will tell you, I'm preparing to go to school. I will probably start this training. I'll probably do this. I'll do this. Even if not them, ask them about like the experience they've noticed from other people that relocated the same way they relocated because some people say they will not even go back to school not because they don't want to but because maybe they are still even trying to just settle and all those things they are they are doing the study ap application so many other factors coming right but many people who relocate directly go back to school ask them now i'm not saying you should believe me if you know one person ask them if you know two people ask them ask them they will tell you. So when you start through the study abroad process, you are better positioned. You are better positioned. I'm telling you. Okay, let's see. Let's see more questions, more questions. Drop your questions. I want to give in-depth answer today. Someone said, what could be the... What could be the cause of passport stamping delay? I don't know. So you, you have to check the website of the com of the country you are going to. That's not really, like, uh, there's no way to know, by the way. <laughs> it's like asking me what is happening inside the visa, visa office, officers, uh, visa officers uh, place or something. Like, and it's not everybody, it's not happening to everybody. It's not happening in every country. It's not happening to even all the people that apply to the country you are going to. Or all the people from your country, you see? So, if you ask a question and your question has not been answered, can you retype it, please? Let's see more questions. I'm reading. Someone said, can I secure admission without a certificate i'm i'm an undergraduate if you are going for undergraduate studies what you really need is your high school certificate right please note vantage migration does not work with undergraduates so this is not our area of specialty right now look for a company <laughs> look for a company that works with undergraduates and you take it off from there someone said is finland a good country for studying and family relocation it is it is the truth you have to know is that most high income countries have similar things like <laughs> i was so surprised those early days when i came to um, when i was still a student in canada i had the opportunity to travel to australia when i reached it was just like moving to another city right like when you move from city to city you see that the cities are different like the way i'm here now uh, my city or uh, Waterloo City is different from Toronto, it's different from Calgary, like they all have their different vibes, right? So, cities are different, that's just how it is. Countries just have that different feel, different vibes, their culture, but by and large, they, they are very similar. That's why, if you want to go to any country, some people maybe because they've been here in a particular country, they just feel like ah, that one is better than every other one. Oh, it's not true. Check the GDP of Finland. You see that it's better than that of so many countries. Maybe even better than, I don't know, that I, I did not check, but you check. It may even be better than that of Canada. It may be better than that of US. It may be better than that of UK. But you, you will not know because maybe people are not going there like that. But your goal is not to replicate the paths that other people have been following, but to chart your own good paths. Right? I always say that it was if not all, most of the people that I had contact with before I, I did my relocation process were in U.S. Me, myself, I visited U.S. even before I started my study abroad process. So most of those people were in U.S. If I was, if I was being blind, I would just go to U.S. straight. Bam. Right? I'm not saying U.S. is no good. That's not the point. But like, but going to Canada was me chatting my own paths. So now, if you, if you know Dr. Linda, she's in Canada, you always also think that Canada is the only way. 
But somebody else will go to UK and they're doing fine. We go to Finland and they're doing fine. We go to anywhere and they're doing fine. I'm telling you, those people, they're not begging for food. They are very okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of the high income countries are similarly the same. Um, then someone said, let's see. More questions. More questions. Hey, hey, more questions. <laughs> Okay, just in case you're watching this right now, hope you know, hope you know, hope you know that as of when you're watching this, hey, hey, August meeting. Okay, okay, let me not go there, let me not go there. Check the page so that you will see the information about that, all right? <laughs> okay, let's see more questions. I don't want to digress too much. Someone said, what's needed? This is from uh, Mel Ramp, a senior, saying what's needed when you are applying for study abroad, you can go here, go to www.vantagemigration.ca. Please take a screenshot. www.vantagemigration.ca and get started. It's a free study abroad webinar, which will now introduce you to what and what, how the process is, how I did it, how other people have done it, how you can do it, what it entails, and you can go from there. Take a screenshot, okay? Want to go? Okay, so let's go. More questions? Let's see. Somebody said, can someone travel three months before resumption time if you're able to finish the whole process on time? Yes, you can. Provided you have visa, you can travel. Once you get your visa, your visa is valid. Whether it's six months before, whether it's three months before, where, which most times it will not be six months before, right? I'm just like exaggerating. Whether it's one month before you can travel, nobody cares, nobody will query you. If you have a valid visa, you have a valid visa. Though, maybe at the embassy, you can just prepare your mind because at the embassy, like uh, when you are traveling, right? And you have reached the country, they may say, your study is starting in three months time. Why are you coming earlier? So prepare your reason ahead of time because they, more often than not, a visa, um, an immigration officer at the port of entry is going to ask you that question. All right? Someone said, I want to talk to you personally. Is it possible? Yes, chat us inbox, okay? Chat us inbox and we'll be able to take it off from there. Can a children of age 26 and 29 go alone with their dad to Canada for PhD? You can relocate first then you can invite your dad for visiting can relocate first then you can invite your dad for visit if your dad is the one going because you're an adult you cannot come as his dependent right so you have to go then your dad can come for visiting uh, then someone is saying uh, can someone with 22 years gap but with 15 years experience as a, um as a supply chain analyst and logist, uh, analyst and logistics apply for MBA. Yeah, you can. You can. Because MBA is an interdisciplinary program, meaning anybody can apply for it. But the, what I'll ask you is that you have a lot of gap. You benefit from training. You have a lot of gap. You benefit from training so that you know how to turn that gap into a blessing. Instead of allowing the gap to haunt, haunt you. Someone said, please, I have HND and my fiancé has bachelor's degree. We, ha we have one child who between us can apply for study abroad in Canada. And if I have more than four years working experience, any of you can. If you are, if you are coming to Canada, any of you can. So, it's possible. So, it's not, I would say, who is the most enthusiastic? You or your fiancé? Who is the or your fiancé? Who is the most enthusiastic between the both of you? Who is it that say? In fact, let me put it this way: Who is asking this question? That's probably the most enthusiastic one. Maybe most times, who is most enthusiastic? Let the most enthusiastic one handle the process. Okay. Let's see. If you wanna ask come a question. Um, I don't know what the person was saying. Like the person said, can you use the question box close to the comment box? Yeah, you can, you can use it. Somebody is asking, can I apply for scholarship and how is it done? Go to 
our free webinar www.advantagemigration.ca to learn more about this question how to apply for scholarship and how it is done <laughs> okay so let's see those that have been counting how many questions have i answered so far i told some people to count for me they've stopped counting no Someone say if you want to relocate as a nurse, please give us more details. Are you a BSc nurse or you are? Uh, what's your highest level of education? If you're a BSc nurse, you can go through the study abroad pathway with us. If you're not a BSc nurse, you probably want to look for other programs that work with people with your highest level of education. Uh, Kwame is saying a CGP of 3.7 for BSc nursing is it possible to attain full scholarship? 100% it's possible. Then someone else said, can I get full scholarship for applying with just student copy transcript? You can do student copy transcript. Like, for let me say for transcripts, don't, don't worry your head. Get started with our training. You will learn exactly what to do. And even if there are issues, we can still advise you on how to go about them. Which we usually do for Vantage Migration students. Okay? So if you... If you have transcript for Holland, the mistake you can make is to say you are folding your arms and waiting for transcript to come out before you start. That's a bad strategy. Get started. You can even now get more information on how to handle your transcript issue. Just see, it makes sense that way. Instead of trying to solve the transcript issue on your own before you get started, then what's the need of this, of you starting? Isn't it so that you will learn exactly how to do it the easy way? All right. Let's see questions, questions, question, questions. Somebody said, "Okay, she's a BSc nurse. Yes, you you can you can get admission, you can get scholarship, you can relocate, you can go for masters, you can go for PGD. There is no limitation actually." Someone said, "Can I apply for Canada PR without a masters? You have to give me more information. Where are you apply, applying from? Are you talking about?" Applying from your home country without PR, uh, without um, masters, or you are in Canada, you have finished BSc in Canada, you want to apply without masters. Are you seeing it's different for the different persons? There are different answers, so I need more information. Wealth, uh, wealth, Dimeji, I need more information. What's your highest level of education? Where are you chatting from right now? Where did you do your undergraduate studies? These are some of the uh, information I need to advise you properly. Uh, someone is saying they usually say relevant work experience that is that is work experience related to your career or the course you are going for. That's how I understand it. Okay, maybe they are talking about uh, the person is replying to my comment on work experience. Get trained, my dear. Get trained. Get trained. Get trained. There are so many things you are going to miss out if, if you don't have the required knowledge. You are going to also miss a, a lot of opportunities. A lot of people that are supposed to get even full scholarship are not getting it because they don't know what to do. They think they know. Which is even, sorry to say, this is, that is even like a worse type of ignorance. When you think you know everything. Even me like this, I strongly believe that I don't know everything when it comes to study abroad. Like, I, which is one of the reasons I would say, please, if there are information flying about Nico, please let me know. I know I don't know everything. In fact, do you know the, one of the high points of knowing is knowing when, when you don't know, when you don't know everything. Knowing that you don't know everything is, is one, that's how you know people, people that know things. Let me tell you. Do you know if you see a professor now? Okay, I was talking to this professor. Mm hmm yeah, so the professor was saying something. He said, ah, there's a topic that came out recently. He has not read about it and all that. So he was just telling me something about like how someone else was talking about it and he didn't have, he hasn't formed an opinion on it yet. I was just laughing. I said, hell, professor, he says she, he has to go and read about what is being discussed. Even somebody that is not even a professor, we almost always have something to say about every topic flying around on social media. A professor wants to get read about it. But a professor understands that for him to have an informed opinion on something, he may need to, you know, gather more information, gather intelligence. So, you know, it made me reflect on how those who know 
always get to understand that there is always more to know at any point in time. And how those who don't even know anything think that they know everything just because they know one or two things. <laughs> Do you get? <laughs> Some people, because they know that, ah, one of my friends got admission abroad. Ah, they say, call, call me. Admission, education consultant, my friend got admission abroad. They'll be telling you, they'll be telling you something. They'll be like, ah, I'm telling you, this is how it works. Even my friend got admission abroad. <laughs> like, they, they, they are so intelligent because their friend got admission abroad. Do you get? But even, even somebody like me, you come and meet me with some, there are some things you come and meet me with. Especially if it's something with trend news, I'll have to go and read it to understand what that country is saying about that thing at that point. So, the height of knowing is knowing that you don't know everything. So if you are not sincere with yourself, okay, that's a different thing. I was asking, um, uh, let's see. You, uh, I know I asked people to count for me. How many? How many questions have I answered so far? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm getting tired. I've been standing. Da -da -da -da. Mm. I've been standing up today. I'm not sitting down. How many questions have I answered so far? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Let's see. How many questions have I answered? All those people stopped counting. Okay. Since they stopped counting, we're going to call it a day. Thank you so much for taking out your time to attend this live session. And if you're watching this video as a replay, good. Happy for you that you took out your time to watch it from beginning to end. And I hope you learned from today's question and answer. Eh? Turn the notification of this page. Turn the notification of this page so that anytime I go live, you'll be notified. It's very important. Turn the notification of this page. Anytime I go live, you'll be notified. Before then, make sure you take good care of yourself. All right? Until I see you again. And keep in mind, I'm an educational consultant with Vantage Migration. And myself and my team, we train graduates and professionals. All right? <laughs> we train graduates and professionals who want to relocate abroad and how to do that successfully through the study abroad route. We we'll train you on how to get admission, how to get scholarship, how to get study loan, and any other thing because there are always small, small things in between. <laughs> and any other thing you need in order to successfully relocate abroad, that's what we do. All right, and we do it well. You can go to our page and see all the things that we've been doing from time to time, right? And uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that we work with everybody, whether it's um, whether you're a graduate going to Canada, to US, to UK, to Australia, to Finland, you know, to Ireland, where we have Dublin and the other, irrespective of where you're going to work with, irrespective of your grade, whether you have the class, lower credit, upper credit, second class, lower, second class, upper, first class, distinction, whatever, whether you have masters. Uh, HND, BSc, we still work with you. And irrespective of what you studied or what you are going to study abroad. So, by the way, we are saying, if you have a study abroad dream, if you have a relocation abroad dream, which you already know, that study abroad is the fastest, easiest, and most reliable way for you to relocate abroad now, right? So if you have a relocation dream, we advise you to go through the study abroad route, we also advise you to get trained. This is where our free webinar comes in. So make sure that if you have not already attended the free webinar, that you go to www.vantagemigration.ca. You can take a screenshot. www.vantagemigration.ca. Go there, attend our webinar, all right? And you'll be able to learn more. Stay for the question and answer session. Get the cheat code, chat us inbox, and we'll take it off from there. All right. But also, if you have more questions, feel free chat us inbox on Instagram. All right, at Dr. Linda Iheme, which is a verified page. Okay, at Dr. Linda Iheme, you can also take a screenshot of this. So chat us inbox, and we will be able to respond to your questions. 
make just make sure you attend the webinar but if you have if you forgot the webinar link or something you can still chat us in box and we can send you the webinar link that's always a, a place to start because we believe that information first any other thing can follow information first if you understand what it entails if you understand what to do if you understand how to go about it it's easier for you to then make up your mind that ah, is this for me or is it not for me right take good care of yourself till i see you again all right bye